anyway and then we went through this simple workflow here uh, we went through a series of examples now to kind of highlight um, these disadvantages and advantages and how you would actually go about leveraging integration and configuration I thought I would uh, make use of uh, my website I always use my website as an example because I use that I've been using that thing for years so I know it inside out uh, I have classic examples associated with the website right so for starters this website is uh, was implemented not from scratch it's implemented using um, uh, or it's deployed using uh, a content management system referred to as WordPress somebody was asking how you go about using WordPress where well, you just go to the, the WordPress dot is it org website and then you download web, WordPress and then you store it right you have to make sure that you have prerequisite software components installed though um, um, so the thing with 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 the way WordPress is implemented is because it's a generic piece of software. This is just a content management system. It can be used in so many different contexts. I just highlighted some context. Some people out there will use it to set up professional sites such as the State House website, right? Such as the sh, sh.gov.zm website, WordPress. Some people out there, we decided to set it up using uh, applications that are used to uh, publish news, right? LusakaTimes.com, right? This is all WordPress. This is WordPress. Um, this is WordPress. So, yes, sir. You're too fast. Plus, uh, your screen is bread. My screen. Everyone is complaining about. Yeah, so we can't see the collectors. Oh, okay. Let me just uh, check. Maybe it's my connection. Uh, so is is my skin is is my screen blurred for everybody? Oh, uh, no. Yes, sir. This is the first time. I, I don't know how to fix this. I would have to check if everybody is is affected to determine if uh, if the problem is on my end, right? Is there anyone amongst you who is able to clearly see the screen? <laughs> Uh, yes, we, uh, I, I, can, I can see the screen clear. Okay, Even so, I can see the screen clear. Okay, so then the, we know that the problem is not from light on. So those experiencing problems, it could be the network you are on, maybe you're on the Unza network or something. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I do apologize, but maybe you can play back the recording because we know the recording is going to be of high quality, if that's the case. Right? So, so for starters, right? This example that I'm giving, the, the, the content management system called WordPress. In, instead of me writing the source code, right? HTML markup language, the CSS, and the, the, the scripting, the, the backend service from scratch, what I did was I reused. I decided to reuse an existing component. It's a full-fledged service, right? Called WordPress. Number one example of reuse, right? At the service level. So I went to WordPress, uh, WordPress is it org, right? And then I downloaded WordPress. So I'd go here, I download WordPress, and then I install it. I installed it on the server computer system that is used to host my website. Out of the box, WordPress works just fine, right? But because I wanted to brand WordPress the way I wanted it to look like. And branding doesn't mean the names of the menu items here. Branding entails the template, right? The way you want this website to look like, the layout of things, how you want posts to look like. Okay? So what did I do? Well, what I did was I went out there again, in as much as I could, because WordPress is implemented in such a way that programmers, can write their own templates. You can create your own template. But because Lighton is not lazy, but busy, I guess, be lazy, I don't know. But because Lighton is busy, and because he wanted to quickly deploy this, what he did was after installing WordPress, he went out there and looked for potential, to look for potential templates or themes that he could use, reuse, right? still at the service level here. And what you do is if you just uh, go to the, 
if you go to the themes repository, and in fact, within WordPress, there's a way of accessing themes here. Um, uh, so if I go under themes here, there are other places where you can get themes, right? You see these? These are, most of these are free actually, right? So there are people out there that uh, maybe they're experimenting with programming or they want to showcase that they're really good at this. They'll create themes and share them, right? Tons and tons of themes. So if I wanted, I could have applied this theme to my site, right? But uh, I, I don't remember which sort of theme I applied. So a whole broad sp spectrum of themes, right? Reuse. Remind me later, come on. Reuse, right? Now to showcase, right? I'm just going to quickly showcase how this happens. And I apologize if this was done in EU 1020, but I'm doing this so that uh, you remember in case you've forgotten. I don't know if you discussed this during your discussion of quantum magnetic systems in EU 1020. No. Okay, that's fine then. That's, you know, we know we're not wasting time here. So reuse at the theme level, right? So I install WordPress and I want it to look in a certain way. Instead of creating, writing um, source code, right? Coming up with only a program here because when you're creating a theme, it's a combination of HTML and CSS, right? I guess it is programming anyway. Instead of right, creating a theme on my own, what I did was I went out there and I downloaded, I, I identified the theme I wanted to use. And in the past, what I've personally done is I've experimented with a number of themes. So I'm logged on right now in WordPress. If I go to the section that allows me to change the appearance, right? And I go to themes here. You'll notice that in the past I have installed a number of themes, right? So assuming I only had one theme installed and I wanted to change the way this looks like. It looks like this right now. Change the way it looks like. Like the previous theme I was using was Ghostwriter, for instance. I'll just say activate. Oh my goodness, what, what theme am I using now? Oh, what theme am I using now? Goodness. Uh, uh oh. What theme am I using now? Uh oh. Uh, I think I'm. <laughs> this is the uh, uh, wording here. I have a lot of themes in there, and so. If I don't know the type of theme I am using, I'll have to spend countless hours wasting my time trying to figure out what theme I was using. So uh, pardon me here, let me just quickly check. Uh, oh, wow. That's very sad. You can make up something. Maker. I don't know if I have a theme called Maker here. Maker. Okay, I hope it will work. So, I've changed the theme to Ghostwriter, right? Observe what will happen. This, this, this is how my site was looking at this before I started the experiment. This is why I don't experiment with live sites. I'll leave this here. If I open a new, and I'll open a new thing, I'll go to lightning.org or something. Um, and if I open this, it will look different now, right? Because I've changed the theme. And I've changed the theme by not programming. This is the theme, this is what I was worried about. Right? I've changed the look and feel um, not by creating my own theme, but by reusing an already existing theme. I, I can go back here if I don't like the way this looks like. I'll go back to, um, I'll go back here, log into my WordPress uh, site, which is, uh, I guess, here. And then I'll say, well, let me check and see how um, this, this thing can I check here. Uh, let's let's look at how inside ground. Let's look at uh, where am I? okay. Let's look at uh, 2011, right? 2011. I activate this, right? I wait wait for us to do the processing behind the scenes. It's done now. I'll go back here, refresh, and my site will look completely different, right? It looks ugly here because uh, once you change the theme, right, you're going to have to again make minor configuration, right? adjustments. And again, this is tied to, if you remember this, look, we adopt the thing here, you configure, uh, we adapt the component, right? So if we were to look at this example I'm giving you, I'd have to adapt it so that it looks visually appealing. It looks ugly. These are supposed to be main items here, right? Um, I've messed this thing up. Uh, let's see if we can fix this. I can fix it later on, I guess, but let's see if we can go to make and uh, reject. I think it was make I call, so I create this. I hope this, this is the part where we pray, even though it's not Sunday, but we pray that this thing will wake up. But also, the people are concerned. Uh, I'm getting, I'm telling you back what it was, right? So, 
So the bottom line here, I'm just showing okay, two instances where you're reusing, right? A complete full-fledged service, which is WordPress, the WordPress coded management system, just download and install it. But also, uh, during the configuration process, instead of creating my own theme, instead of writing markup language and CSS to, to style the way that I want this whole application to look like, I just reuse an already existing um, theme. It gets even better, right? It gets even better for WordPress. Besides the themes, once I, 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 I identify a theme, for me to, to make uh, my blog more interactive, right? There are certain microservices that I'll be interested in integrating um, uh, with, with my blog. For instance, one of the things I do is, because I am semi-active on Twitter, I would want the people that visit my site to be able to see the things that I'm tweeting, right? So instead of you going to my, my Twitter account to see what, I, if you are interested in what I tweet about, for whatever reason, instead of doing that, I can install a plugin that embeds the tweet strip, which is here. Because I know that maybe some people would want to share the things that I'm, 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 I'm blogging about, I, I, I make it possible for them to share these by tweeting, by, by sharing on Facebook which is why I have this plugin here, right? And, and you can actually see them on my live site. So if you come here, there's this tweet stream here. You notice that the, uh, the last uh, tweet, uh, the last thing on my tweet stream was a retweet from Hussein, right? Um, uh, I was attending a conference. I haven't tweeted in a while here, but if I was to tweet, right? I haven't tweeted in a while. If I was to tweet here, and I hope my, 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 my Twitter uh, followers won't think that, uh, uh, that um, uh, hope my Twitter followers won't think that I'm, I'm tweeting about these things. But just to show you an example, right? If I'm logged in right now, right, uh, on, and tweet on Twitter, um, I'm trying to see if uh, I just don't want to test this. So just say uh, this is a test. This tweet during um, okay. uh, if I tweet this, right? I tweet this, and um, and uh, and I guess your generation probably doesn't use Twitter or something, but there are still those of us that use Twitter. Yes, we do. Um, but if I tweet this, right? Um, because of the plugin I'm using, and I go back here and I refresh, I should be able to see the most recent tweet, right? Which you say this is, uh, uh, I mean, I guess it's not yet here. I don't know why it's taking long here, but that's okay. I guess with time, you should be able to synchronize this and be able to see the, uh, I hope it will show up soon, to, to, to see this. Right? But there's more, right? This, this, this stuff you're seeing here that showcases the number of people that are logged onto my website. There are three people logged onto my website. Right? No bots, these are actual people somewhere out there. I can even check the map, right? To see where where people have logged on from in the past, right? If you notice this thing here. Uh, I'll just say uh board live or something, and make people wait here. But probably not. Uh, I'm able to see where people, right? Uh, I'll just say 10 in the last 10 days left here, here, right? In the last 10 days, where are people coming from, right? So in the last 10 days, the people that are visiting my site are coming from these different parts of the world, right? Now, I can, I can see all of these things um, because of the plugin. WordPress, by default, does not have this feature, right? Um, I reuse. Instead of writing code, right? Instead of writing a plugin using PHP that I can then integrate with WordPress, what I did was I just went out there and I went to the WordPress plugin, Repository. There's a plugin repository, right? So I'll come here. Similar to the themes repository, there's a plugin repository. And the plugin repository has thousands, if you notice here. There's a total, we can extend your WordPress uh, experience, right? Browse with 9,738 free plugins, right? So from here, you can search whatever it is uh, you are looking for, right? All of these are uh, microservices, right? Um, and, and how you search really is you could look at how many people have installed the plugin, you know, how many are actually using the plugin and all those different things here. And installing the plugin is simple, right? 
You identify the plugin you want, you log into your WordPress uh, account, um, which would be here, I guess. I don't know, here. And then instead of under appearance, you go under uh, somewhere at, on the dashboard, I believe. I can say new also, I guess. I don't know if I can, probably not new yet. What is this? I wanted to go to the dashboard, not the home page, but dashboard, right? Actually, not the dashboard, the plugin should be uh, somewhere here, I guess. Plugins, right? So somewhere on the menu item, um, you go somewhere at the bottom. Uh, I can check for installed plugins so that you see how I've extended this version, uh, my, my instance of, of uh, WordPress, right? I have a total of, uh, I have installed 52 plug, uh, 62 plugins, 55 of which are active. So, so what you see on my blog, if you visit my blog, right, the things that you see on my blog, right, the interactivity that is there is in part facilitated by reusable components called plugins, right, microservices, um, a whole bunch of them, right? Um, and because there's, there are so many of them because people use WordPress for different things. It's a new version of it. Yeah. Um, the issue of control, by the way, if you remember, so this stuff here, right? Uh, I have to test first to see what sort of changes are associated with a new version. And if I confirm that it won't break apart my, my, my WordPress instance, then I can say update. You know, so some, some really interesting things. Um, installing a plugin is not really difficult. So if you want to install a new plugin, you can just click the new button. And recent versions of, of WordPress have the repository, the plugin repository integrated within WordPress, right? So I'll come here, I can search, if you notice, I can search by popularity, I can search by keyword, I can search by favorite, right? So if you notice your contact form, right? Uh, your search uh, engine optimization, um, uh, so many different things here. Um, I, I do hope uh, that this thing of usability by using WordPress as an example is helpful to you. And by the way, most of these things that you are seeing on the left-hand side, right? are plugins, like this table press is a plugin. I had to install this. It helps me properly format uh, or to properly create visually appealing tables. So if, I, if you go to my teaching page and uh, you look at how I present the courses, right? If I, this, is a, this is a table, right? If I click on a specific course, it's last year or something. Um, the reason why it looks the way it looks like here, uh, you know, uh, Alternating colors for this. This is, this is the table here. I have to. This is the table, right? Um, and it's made possible because of this plugin called Table Press. You know, I've installed the Discuss plugin. This makes it possible for people to be able to. Um, if you go to one of the things that are posted here and you want to add a comment, whatever reason maybe you want to contribute, right? Which is what more people do. You notice that the comment section allows you to comment using Discuss. So I don't have to implement um, a comments form, right? And hook it to, or use the different plugin comments form. I can use Discuss, right? Uh, which allows people to comment using Facebook, your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your Google account or something. Do you understand this? Hello? Oh, yes. oh yeah, that's that great. Right, now oh, finally, okay. right? still, sorry? Oh yeah, I have a question. On the part where you let's say you want to test out a simple WordPress, just yes. to like uh, set up uh, a sample blog, there's a part where you have to set up the domain name. But the domain name you have to pay for that. Are there any free domain names that you can use for testing? No, I mean you have to if you're trying to deploy a website, a WordPress website, either use the WordPress.com, which is a cloud service, it's free of charge for the most part. Or when you are testing it, you can use it locally. So you install it on your local machine, and then you access it using local host. You understand? Otherwise, you have to buy a domain. But domain names are cheap now. They're not very expensive. If you go to uh, background, which is my, please tell me if you want to buy a domain name. I'll send you an affiliate link, and then maybe I'll, I'll get this to discount in the future. That's what they say. If you go under the site ground, I've been with site ground for many, many years, since 2004 or something. I've been hosting my website, 2004, 2007, I don't know. Um, but if you go under, uh, if you go to site ground and then you go under, uh, I guess, not, not web hosting, but um, uh, perhaps they are hosting or something. If you notice something like this, right, you're paying $6 per month or something, right? 
uh, it's pretty decent. And they all, these are the added features, right? The HTTPS we're talking about, right? They come in as as packages. Your host, uh, your your host uh, provider will provide you with these things. But I'm trying to see if we can check for the hosting. I mean, the, the price for domain name register, uh, registering a domain or something. Let me see if I can. I was trying to see under prices. Which hosting? Which hosting? Uh, what hosting? Yeah, Domain names. Let's see if we can search. Let's say I wanted to create a domain www.ict. Uh, ICT, I'm sure there's no crazy person who's come up with it. ICT 2020.org, right? Or if you wanted to, to set up to buy this domain, you notice that uh, this is available. So they're telling us that um, we can, uh, let's see here, uh, we can. Uh, let me see if we can get uh, choose a plan. Or well, I just want to let's look at the cheapest plan here, three nine nine per month or something. It's not that expensive. Domain name registration. You see this amount here. So you you would uh, go if you want to. I'm sure there are some places like GoDaddy, I guess, uh, or Google. I think recently got into business of doing that. They're in beta. Uh, they're doing beta testing. I don't know if they've actually started selling domains, but whenever the Google comes. Onto the scene, usually they make their services way, way cheaper. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's usually the case. But you notice here, right? We'll that uh, you are paying 356 quacha 88 in way. I'm just converted right now in price converted for a whole year. Is that too expensive to buy a domain? No. Yeah, I, I guess that's cheap for the. I, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'm saying that I guess that's cheap for like for the entire year or something. Yeah, and you have to think here yeah, when you're setting up a service, right? There's probably ways in which you're going to monetize the service. So you, your site will eventually pay for itself. And that should be the goal, right? Yeah, you know? So you can advertise if, if, if your site is popular, you can start advertising for, on behalf of people and they pay you money, right? Similar to what uh, these, these characters do. If you go to Saka Times and we had a discussion about this, somebody was asking, right? Uh, you see this thing here, save now UBA, whatever. This, this, this thing that you're seeing here, this is a, a Google ad, right? You see ads by Google. So if I click here, I'll help to Saka Times make money. Pay the click, right? So that's okay. Um, so, so reuse it, but it gets a bit better, right? If you notice, I've, I've been talking about reuse at various levels and stages, right? We started at the service level with WordPress for this example, and then we went at component level, we're looking at plugins. But what if, what about the examples of, at the programming level? Well, in some extenuating circumstances, it may not be possible for you to find a plugin that is appropriate for what you want to do. What do you do in that case? Develop new component. Do you understand this? Now for WordPress, because you're using WordPress as a, as, as a, as, as a service that you're using, if you want a new microservice and this, the plugin that is appropriate for that is not available, what you do is you write your own. Uh, and all you do really is you, you, you just uh, look up tutorials, right? Uh, the tutorials, uh, I'm sure there's, a, there's an official tutorial so if you can check here, developers there. Yeah. If you go to developers.org dot slash plugins intro, Documentation, comprehensive documentation on how you implement a WordPress plugin. Now, I guess you're wondering, well, I, I mean, what sort of plugin can you not find here? Well, because students that I interact with at the University of London know that I work there, perhaps I might want to create a plugin that helps students compute the GPA, right? I write it in, in web, uh, I, I develop a WordPress plugin and then I embed it to my website. So whoever is interested in doing that, you just come to my website and do that. So classic example of how you, uh, you do that. That's why you have again those import statements as you're writing the, the, the as you're implementing the WordPress plugin. Maybe what you might want to do is reuse reuse uh, libraries, right? Uh, you write plugins in PHP, by the way. WordPress is implemented in PHP. Do you understand this? Okay, I know I do. That's okay.
I know I do. I understand this. Um, but but you see, there's a there's a bit of an issue here, right? Um, so these are all advantages of writing about. I just gave examples specifically. We're looking at a case example here. But there's advantages. If you look at this content pane here, that that shows this uh, this sad face here, right? It turns out that I was using many many years ago. I decided to use a, a plugin called P, uh, called the uh, Google Fusion Table, right? Now the unfortunate thing about Google Fusion Tables is that uh, as with Google now, it's become notorious for that, right? Google Fusion Table, nasty organization when it comes to that. If you look up Google Fusion Tables, what you notice is that um, uh, it was decommissioned. It was a very nice service, but it was decommissioned. If you notice, it's the, the Wikipedia page says Google Fusion Tables was the service, right? Um, the visualization service. So it was launched in 2019, and then 10 years later, in 2019, they shut this thing down. You know, it was a sad day for me because because they shut this down, the service was no longer available. Because the service was no longer available, everything that previously, all the things that previously used Google Fusion Tables were dead, essentially. Control, right? Loss of control. Um, and it's quite sad because I had a lot of posts that used Google Fusion Tables, right? I literally locked myself in. Um, you know, so I thought I'd showcase this as an example. Um, they, of course, when, when most of these developers or entities will send notifications to say, we are giving you, let's say, six months to transition, to migrate to an alternative solution, right? Uh, after which we shall shut down this service. And if you remember, the alternative solution here would be, I guess you'd have to look back here, right? Um, you, you'd have to revisit here, you come back here, and then software discovery will find and then you identify new components or something. So uh, the Google sent us uh, something like this, um, you know, which was quite sad. Uh, and I have a lot of, I think there are a number of posts that are still dead now, actually. But I can show you examples. Because I'm so busy now uh, that I can't, uh, uh, but I can't, um, I can't, let me see if I can find uh, election results somewhere. I don't know if I can, but. Mm, not historical mapping, but uh, mapping maybe. I need a mapping, uh, not mapping regional voting patterns, no maps, mapping. Uh, I was I was actually looking. Ah, they're using Google Fusion Tables. This is classic here. So if you, uh, this is dead. So sad. If you look at this, you see this. This 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 was uh, this had a very nice visualization of a map of Zambia with the 2011 results. But because I haven't changed this, I've been so busy now. Um, I haven't changed this. The result is this. Uh, where the map was supposed to appear, there's this nasty error, right? 404 error, you know? Um, so huge disadvantage here. So these are things to think about as you're, you know, trying to obsess a lot about integration and configuration. Um, just showcasing an example of, of how uh, one would be able to, I was attempting to think here. <laughs> On this page, I was attempting to, after the, the deadline was long past, I was attempting to, retrieve data, but I was unable to because it, the data had passed and they deleted the data, right? Um, nasty, nasty stuff. So, anyway, yes. Um, so the the data was lost because you were interacting less with, with the site or what happened exactly? No, the data was lost because the way Google Fusion tables worked, worked is it was a web service. So you are referring to an existing service out there on the internet, right? On some remote computer system, a separate computer system. Now, when they shut Google Fusion Tables down, right? They told people to say, if you do not migrate, if you don't download your data, you will lose it because we will remove it from our systems. And I think they gave us, uh, if you notice this, this was published on, I don't know if you can see here, December 3rd. And then they're saying, you'll be able to download your table data via Google Checkout until March 3rd, 2020. And in fact, it just gave us three months, right? Nasty people. That's what you get when you're using a free service. If you are paying money, you could easily sue these characters, right? 
breach of contract or something. But this was a free service. So they're doing you a favor by telling you, say, you have three months to back up your information. And I was busy and I lost data. But that's okay. I can always recreate this since I don't have time. Um, that's okay. I'm not complaining. I did complain at the time to myself, but that's fine. So listen, I thought uh, this was a, a nice way of wrapping up uh, uh, our, our discussion with integration.